come to day three of the power of thanksgiving challenge. Uh, if you have been here day one, day two, you would have known what we have been benefiting from this challenge. But if you are new, you have not lost. You can still catch up with day one and day two of the challenge. Go and watch the videos. We have powerful teachings each day. The trainings have been wonderful. Today is going to be another day of encounters. Are you ready for the encounters? Hallelujah. Amen. We start first by saying you are welcome again. We want to say that you should ensure that you are not distracted. Concentrate. Don't multitask. And we'll go on to take a review of day two, what we did yesterday. Yesterday, our scripture was, our Thanksgiving scripture was Psalm 100 and verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Um, I would like someone to give me uh, the message version, the version from the message, uh, and I'll call for it when you are ready. Uh, 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 it's, it opened my eyes to something which I would like to share with us. Do we have it there? You have it in the phone or tablet or what? Hallelujah. Our teaching had the focus on the theme, a lifestyle of thanksgiving. We're looking at a number of questions and why we must give thanks and why thanksgiving should not just be an occasional thing. Why thanksgiving should not just be when we feel like. Why thanksgiving should not be only when God has done good things for us. Hallelujah. We will expantiate a little bit more. Our homework for yesterday, day two, meditate on the Thanksgiving scripture for the day and also write down five blessings you enjoy in your life and give thanks. Also, commit yourself to start and continue using the Thanksgiving book. We talked about it yesterday. And thirdly, we said, you should remember, no complaining, no grumbling about anything whatsoever throughout this challenge. So I want each one of you here in the audience here before me to say with me, no complaining, no, complaining, no, grumbling, no grumbling about anything, about anything throughout, this challenge. throughout this challenge. And I want each one of you online to note that and make sure that you obey it. Amen? Amen. Our teaching yesterday was titled A Lifestyle of Thanksgiving. We are to thank God 
as a lifestyle all year round, not occasionally, not once in a while. It's to become part of us. Amen. And that means there will be situations and circumstances in our lives that will make it difficult for us to give thanks. But we must give thanks because God demands it. That's why today the title of our teaching is Thanksgiving in Difficult Times. Thanksgiving in Difficult Times. But before we fully launch into our teaching, I want to remind us that as we taught about a lifestyle of thanksgiving, an all year round thanksgiving, a thanksgiving in all situations, in all circumstances, in everything, we found from scripture why God wants us to thank God. We saw that God wants a love relationship with us. And so he wants us to thank him. We also found out something very important. That thanksgiving is God's love language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you use the love language of your husband or your wife, what happens? The relationship grows. Isn't it? But when you neglect it, the relationship goes sour. God wants us to use his love language. Hallelujah. And uh, I discovered something as I went through uh, the Message Bible. The way the Message Bible, which is a, a paraphrase, the way it puts it, puts it in a very wonderful way again. And I'll read it for us. It says, uh, that's uh, Psalm 100 verse one to five. We, have, we, we taught on this and we said thanksgiving gives us access to God. Thanksgiving gives us access into God's presence. Thanksgiving gives us access into the gate of God. It's like the key to enter into his gate. But listen to this. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this. God is God. And God, God. He made us and we didn't make him. We are his people. His well-tended sheep. Now this is where we are going. Enter with the password. Thank you. Hallelujah. Enter with the password. It, 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 it makes the, for, 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 for the modern, modern uh, children of these days, it makes it clearer. They understand password. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a is a computer language. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving is the pass God's password. Hallelujah. You can only enter with that password. You know that without password, you, you can't en enter into somebody's email. You can't enter into somebody's uh, 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 phone. You can't enter somebody's uh, social media account and so on. Hallelujah. 
enter with his password. It blew my mind. Hallelujah. We, th we found out that Thanksgiving builds our memory of our history with God. Thanksgiving restores the memory of our history with God. And Thanksgiving reinforces our memory of our history with God. And when this happens, it helps us to press on with God. And we ended up yesterday talking about the discipline of Thanksgiving. Cultivating the discipline of Thanksgiving. It comes by cultivating a habit. The habit of Thanksgiving. Before you can cultivate a habit, you require discipline. You cultivate the habit of thanksgiving through discipline. We talked about developing intentional and conscious habits of thanksgiving. And one of the ways to develop that is through the prayer book. And yesterday, I brought my prayer book, and I still have it with me. Sorry, my Thanksgiving book. We said one of the ways to develop intentional and conscious habits of Thanksgiving is through the Thanksgiving book. And yesterday, as well as today, I have here with me my Thanksgiving book book. And uh, you have to design the page by having the serial number column, the date column, and the rest of uh, the space is devoted to thanksgiving topics. So that you put the date when you thank God, you put the date you, you put the number of the Thanksgiving topic, you put the date when you thank God, and you put and you, 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 you indicate what you thank God for. That's thanking God intentionally and consciously. Amen? You can spend five minutes to do that in the morning, spend 10 minutes, spend uh, uh, 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be a very lengthy time. Each day, do something about it. If you can do it in the morning, you do it in the evening. Amen? But it's best to do it in the morning because when you do it in the morning, the uh, consciousness of thanking God goes with you throughout the day so that you go into the next stage of developing unconscious and spontaneous habits of thanking God. You have to develop unconscious and spontaneous habits of thanking God. Such habits just come up when uh, something good happens to you and you say, thank God. Oh God, I thank you. Somebody does a good thing for you and you thank God. And God opens a door for you and you say, thank God. So that throughout the day, you are not waiting until you come back to come and write in your thanksgiving book. You cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise and thanksgiving is always sometimes mixed up. And as Professor Zacharias Formum said in his book, uh, The Ministry of Praise and Thanksgiving, it can be separated, it can be together, but they go hand in hand, they go together. Praise is acknowledging God for who he is. You acknowledge him for his person, you acknowledge him for his being. You acknowledge him for his character. But thanksgiving is acknowledging God 
for what he has done, for what he is also doing, you can acknowledge him for what he's doing presently, and for what he will do for future events, you can thank him for that. That's thanksgiving. But many a times, they go hand in hand. And uh, Professor Formum says, because it is difficult to have praise without thanksgiving, and difficult to have thanksgiving without praise, he will always like to handle both. That's why he wrote the book, The Ministry of Praise and Thanksgiving. And you will do well to read that book. But I want to mention very briefly that there are seven words, seven, he seven Hebrew words that are used in the Bible for praise. And most of those words are the expressions of thanksgiving. Does it surprise you? I say again, it is interesting to note that most of the Hebrew words used in the Bible for praise are mainly concerned with thanksgiving. For example, the first one, Toda. It means thanksgiving. The second, barak. It means to kneel and to bow. And such activities are carried out also when you are thanking. The third, tehila, which means to sing a song of thanksgiving or praise. So you find that thanksgiving keeps reoccurring. In, 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 in praise. They are intermingled. The fourth, halal, which means to give thanks and praise by being foolishly loud, by being foolishly enthusiastic, by being greatly emotional with, your intensi with intensity. Hallelujah. That's what Halal talks about. You give thanks and praise in a foolishly loud manner, in a foolishly enthusiastic manner. Hallelujah. You, you let yourself go. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful expression. And the fifth, Yada, uh, which is pronounced Yoda. It means to give thanks and to praise by, uh, uh, with extended hands. You give thanks with extended hands. You raise your hands. Hallelujah. The sixth, Yama. To give thanks with musical instruments. You sing along with musical instruments. You sing songs with instruments. And the seventh, Shabak, which is to give thanks in a loud tone or voice or to shout and declare triumph. Hallelujah. It means when God has done great, great things, you shout and declare his victory and his triumph but as, you, as you praise him and thank him for it, as you thank him. It means to raise a holy shout, a holy roar, a holy noise. Hallelujah. You must ensure that you bring in all this in your thanksgiving. Amen? Be very free to do to, to, to do the, all this as you thank God so that it is coming from your heart because if God watches you as you go to a stadium or you are watching on TV a football game and your favorite team scores 
you spontaneously get up and shout. Isn't it? Now, when God does things for you, you can't get up and shout. You think it's holy to just be so mute. No. God wants you to shout. Amen. Hallelujah. So even in difficult times, even when things are happen to you that are painful, you should be able to respond to God in these ways. Amen? Thanking God in difficult times is one of the most difficult things to do. And why is it so? The easiest thing to do when there are difficult times, when there are difficult circumstances and situations, the easiest thing to do is to complain, to grumble, to murmur. But God does not want that. Complaining, murmuring, drives away the Spirit of God. Complaining, murmuring, draws the the, 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 the spirits of demons to you. Complaining happens when you are more mindful of the problem than of God's solution. When you are more mindful of the devil than of the power of God. That's what happens? So when you complain, just tell yourself you are more mindful of the devil and his power than of God. But we'll quickly look at the example of thanksgiving in difficult times from the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? we we'll look at it from... Um, John chapter 11, the first one. John chapter, sorry, John chapter 6, first of all. The background of this was that there were thousands of people who were hungry. Jesus has been teaching. They need to be fed. And uh, Jesus wanted them fed. Uh, There were only five loaves of bread and two fishes. What will five loaves of bread and two fishes do in feeding thousands of people? Apart from the women and children, the men were 5,000. Jesus did not pray any long prayer. He did not pray any pr prayer of complaining to God. He did not ask God to multiply it. What did he do? The Bible tells us in verse 11 of John chapter 6. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. If you have read the story, you'll be aware that everybody ate and they were full. Hallelujah. What do you do when you don't have enough money to feed your family? When you don't have enough food at home? When things are not enough the Lord Jesus demonstrated it by thanksgiving. Hallelujah. It's difficult to say you are thanking God for this, this thing that will not go round. But he did. John chapter 11. We read verse 41. The background of this was that 
Lazarus, the friend of the Lord Jesus Christ, died. And when Jesus came, he had been buried for some days. And uh, it has been four days. But in verse 41, the Bible says, after he had told them to roll away the stone of the tomb, the Bible says, so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He th was thanking God in a situation of loss, in a situation of pain, in a situation of grief. He thanked God. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible tells us, before he thanked God, the Bible tells us that he wept. That, 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 that's, that's how tender he was. That's how much uh, dear Lazarus was to him and the family of Lazarus. He wept, but he thanked God. Can you thank God in the midst of pain? Amen. Thirdly, Matthew 26, verse 20, 25 and 26. Uh, in this scripture, the Lord Jesus Christ was about to eat the Passover and break bread with his disciples. And uh, he told them that one of them will betray him that night, that same night. It's a painful thing, isn't it? The Bible says in verse 25, Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, yes, it is you. Then in verse 26, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body. Are you understanding? It was a time of grief, a time of pain. A time when he was disappointed by somebody. A time when he was betrayed. He gave thanks. He gave thanks. Somebody will say, how can I give thanks for that? There will be difficult situations, difficult times. All such will come up. Failures can come up. Disappointments can come up. Bad things can come up. Brethren, they can come up. And the truth is, we sometimes ask God to change our situation and our circumstances, not realizing that he sometimes allows those difficult situations, those challenges, those hard times, those difficulties, he allows them to happen to us so as to change us. He's concerned, first of all, with changing us. I want you to note that. Hallelujah. And if you can be changed and be molded, there will be a new outburst and flow of the life of God in you. What does Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 tell us? It says, In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom all things, no, sorry, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation 
perfect through suffering. I'll take it again. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the offer of their salvation perfect through suffering. Hallelujah. Amen. So, through sufferings that come, through challenges that come, through the difficulties that come, God perfects us. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I'll take it again. Very important scripture. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So in all things, whether good things, whether bad things, whether easy situations, whether difficult situations, no matter what it is that the devil has orchestrated to bring your way, the Bible says God will use it to bring good out for you. So when you are thanking God in that difficult situation, in that bad situation, you are not seeing the bad situation. You are seeing what God will bring out of it. If you cannot see that God will bring out good things out of it, then you don't trust God. And it pains God when we don't trust him. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to trust that he is in charge. Somebody said, God can use all the bad things happening to you and turn them around for your good. He will turn your mess into your message. He will turn your test into your testimony. He will turn your failure into your fulfillment. That's how God works. You only have to trust him. Don't be too conscious of the evil things happening. See through the evil and see God at work. God is at work turning the evil into good for your sake. And that's why uh, 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 today's uh, um, scripture Today's Thanksgiving scripture from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The circumstance may be bad. Give thanks in that circumstance. Because that is God's will. The devil may bring a his own bad will into your life at that time. But switch into God's will by giving thanks. And when you give thanks, you impose God's will upon that bad situation, that bad will of the devil. That's how that bad will of the devil can be changed to good. Thank God in all situations. Thank God in all circumstances. Thank God for everything. Thank God in difficult times. We'll end here today and quickly run through our homework for day three. Our homework for day three, meditate on this uh, Thanksgiving scripture for day three, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. And then do your homework of thanking God for some difficult and challenging situations you have experienced. You thank God for some difficult and challenging situations 
you have experienced. The next, thank God for those who have hurt you and forgive those whom you haven't yet forgiven. They have hurt you. You haven't yet forgiven them. Forgive them. Thank God for those who have hurt you and forgive those you haven't yet forgiven. Amen? Next, thank God for the mis mistakes you have made. There are many mistakes you have made in life. In fact, many people enter into difficult times, challenging situations, because of their own mistakes. And sometimes they turn around to blame God. The mistakes they make in decision making concerning their finances. Decision making concerning many things about their families. And they, they enter into debt. They enter into many things. But thank God about the mistakes. Amen. Amen. When you thank God about the mistakes, God can have mercy on you. Thank God for the good he has done to you. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank God for the good he has done through others and through the hearts of others, even though, even though you don't see them. Uh, and before we go, we remind ourselves of our daily reminders. And what's it? Commit yourself not to complain or grumble about anything during this challenge period. It is to help you so that you cultivate that habit of not grumbling. Because grumbling will attract the devil and demons. Thanksgiving will attract God and attract the spirit of God and attract angels to help you. So commit yourself not to complain or grumble about anything during this challenge period. Thank you very much for being with us. We look forward to see you tomorrow. Make sure you invite someone tomorrow. Tell your loved ones something great is happening. Tomorrow, we'll be looking at Thanksgiving, a key to miracles. Don't miss it. Bye for now.